Now, I'm going to guess that when you're doing creative work where it's just based on your intellectual, your own intellectual abilities, there's not a whole lot of startup capital or cost or technology needed. That's my assumption. But what was your plan to get Navarro Creative Group off the off the ground and have all of the resources required to service your customers correctly? Well, the plan was to to make sure that we had a computer and make sure that we understood what we were going to be doing, right? We we had to understand the SEO. We had to understand copy. We had to understand what a website looks like from the back end and what that bots from Google and all those wonderful crawlers who come out to search your website to bring it back to the end user. That was what we needed to understand so that we could do a good job. Now, as we've grown, what we needed to understand is that there's a whole lot of software, which is one, a big chunk of my budget that we invest in to make sure that we can do the best job for our clients. In today's ultra competitive business world, being a successful entrepreneur or business owner can be very challenging. Fortunately, contemporary times have blessed us with resources for tackling those challenges and getting us to success more quickly than we could have imagined. Welcome to The Root of All Success with The Real Jason Duncan, a podcast that explores how the world's most powerful entrepreneurs grow incredible companies. This podcast looks at the five keys to unlocking success as an entrepreneur. A successful educator turned entrepreneur, Jason's mission is to use his gifts of teaching and leadership to help others get the results they want out of life. Join Jason every week and learn the keys to grow a truly successful business. Well, hey there, welcome back. I'm the real Jason Duncan. Thank you for tuning in for this episode of The Root of All Success. I'm coming to you from my home office in Gallatin, Tennessee. And uh, it's a cold February day here in, Nash in the Nashville area, but I'm glad that wherever you are and whenever you're listening to this, that you're listening. Uh, thank you very, very much. It means a lot to know that I got hundreds of thousands of people across the world that are listening to this show. So thank you very much. And if you haven't left that, that review and that uh, you haven't subscribed, please go do that. Take a moment, hit the pause button, go do that really quickly. That means a lot to me because it's not just about ego. It's about me getting a show that's higher rated so more people get to listen to it. I get to make a bigger difference in this world. And that's really what the show is about. I want to want to share my theory on these five keys to success through the lens of my guests and how they have achieved success. So you can watch this on YouTube at The Real Jason Duncan. Uh, just YouTube, you search you, The Real Jason Duncan, you'll find my show there. Or you can go to the root of all success.com to watch, uh, to watch and to, to read the show notes and all that. Well, let me introduce our guests for today. Um, I am, I'm, it's really a privilege to have so many powerful, successful women entrepreneurs in a row that I've been interviewing lately. I think Wendy, uh, my guest today, is the fourth in a row that I've interviewed. Um, and I want to tell you a little bit about Wendy Navarro. Uh, she started her entrepreneurial journey uh, back in 2006 in California in Orange County, and she started an online children's clothing boutique and grew that quite successfully, then moved um, with her husband across the country to Nashville, Tennessee area in Hendersonville, Tennessee, and was continuing to run that, that online store here, was looking for a brick and mortar to open. And through a chance meeting with women that she invited to her home to just meet to because she was new to the area, she got the opportunity to start doing some creative work for this 46-year-old company that then eventually turned into her starting her own creative organization called Navarro Creative Group, which is what she does now with her family. She's extremely successful with that. And she also started something called Sumner Women in Business. And now it has 700 members in that. And she co-manages that with the Hendersonville Chamber of Commerce. And that started just because, as you're going to hear in the show today, her inviting some women to her house because she was new to the area and just wanted to get to know some people. And I love those stories. And we're going to dig deep into that story today. Her passion is to support businesses and business owners. And she, that goes all the way back over a decade. And since 2012, or in 2012, she was recognized uh, with the SBA Home-Based Business Champion of the Year Award. And she won at the district, the state, and the national level. So she is no slouch. She's a very successful, powerful woman in business. Um, in 2019, her husband, Rick, 
retired from a 25 year career as an executive marketing and IT director at a multi million dollar company, and then joined her Navarro Creative Group as their web design and SEO director. And her daughter, I mentioned uh, that they do that, they, they do a lot of cool stuff on TikTok and Instagram Reels, but their daughter Sage manages all the social media accounts. And together they have grown their business, Navarro Creative Group, into one of Sumner County's most reputable digital marketing agencies. They have a couple other kids, Quentin, their eldest son, who's a mechanical engineer for a company here in Nashville area called Lee Company. And uh, their 16 year old son, Vaughn, is a student at Merrill Hyde Magnet School in Hendersonville. And he's already expressed interest in marketing and joining the family business. So I want you to help me welcome today's guest, Wendy Navarro. Wendy, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm really looking forward to this. I appreciate you having me, Jason. Well, we were talking pre-show and I was, th- I told you, I was thinking this morning when I got out of the shower, kind of mentally preparing for the day that your podcast was the first podcast I was ever on as a guest. And I don't remember what year that was. It was three or, I don't know, three or four years ago. I, I don't know. It may not have been that long ago, but it seems like forever ago now things have changed so much, but yeah, you, uh, you were the first person I ever was on the show with. So there you go. <laughs> And, and it was a great show. We had a great time and you were an awesome guest. So I was very excited to see your podcast um, come up and um, very happy to be here. Well, you know, it, it's funny how we don't really recognize or give credit to the things that uh, influence us to act in certain ways. And in a lot of ways that I probably hadn't thought about until now, as you're a guest on my show, that you inviting me to be there probably, probably more than likely propelled me to get involved as a podcaster myself quicker than I would have otherwise. I always wanted to do it, mm-hmm. but going and doing your show. And then I did another one with a colleague of ours that we both know mm-hmm. I, shortly thereafter. It's like, okay, I, I want to do this. This is, this is really good. So uh, here we are. You're, here we you're are. Here. You're the 76th guest I've had on the show. Isn't that cool? That is amazing. It's phenomenal what you have done and the guests that you've had. And I'm an, I'm an avid listener, so I'll let you know that. Love it. <laughs> well, think back to uh, think back to when you you began at your entrepreneurial journey. So I want, I want to kind of start there. So a lot of times guests say, well, yeah, when I was a kid, I shoveled snow or mowed grass or whatever they did or sold cookies or something. But what but others didn't really start their entrepreneurial career until they were in their adult adult years. Like that, that was me. I didn't start until I was an adult. What about you, Wendy? I, I love, I love interviewing people like you who are very successful now, but I like to go back and look at, well, where did it start? Did you have it as a kid? Was it, uh, or as a teenager? Was it college? Was it later as an adult? What, when did your entrepreneurial journey start? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, I was one of those kids. I was one of those kids who was out there hustling. I was selling, literally, I would uh, draw and I would color uh, pictures and I would go door to door selling them for 25 cents. I was the neighborhood babysitter and dog washer. Um, I've always been somebody who just kind of goes out and does something. If I want something, I know I have to go get it myself. So I'm going to go, you know, do what I need to do to get it. And I never really, you know, of course, put those bricks in place to a journey until I was older. I started in, you know, working for the superior court. I had retail jobs and, um, you know, I worked for other people for years until I finally got to a point after my children were born, when I realized that I wanted the freedom of being able to do what I wanted and be able to have balance with my family and my career. And so I left a really lucrative career with the Superior Court, which I absolutely loved in Southern California, and um, decided I was going to stay home and be with my children for a while. Um, And there were only two of them at the time. We now have three. But it was one of those things that I, I needed to do for me. And I knew that I could do it, but I had to have a plan in place and I needed to have my family on board. So when I decided to go into my own entrepreneurial journey, um, it was in 2006, and I started an online um, e-commerce site. So you, so you were working in law, uh, you said in the Superior Court. So you were working in law, corporate career, you liked it, it was lucrative, yeah. you were making money, and that was in the state of California. It was. And you successfully escaped that madness out there. So congratulations. <laughs> Years before now, which the madness is incredibly crazy. 
Yeah, and my apologies to all my friends and listeners in California, because I know I have a lot of them out there. As a matter of fact, I did a podcast tour last summer in California and recorded lots of amazing guests. But holy crap, it is nuts. What is going on? Of course, they're they're all going to Texas, Florida, Tennessee. You know, they're all moving out. But uh, so you were you were doing it before it was cool to do it, right? <laughs> right. I was I was leading the pack. <laughs> So you moved out of California. When, when did you move to, and did you move straight from California to here to Hendersonville, Tennessee? Yes. Uh-huh. In two, 2014. So you start, but you started your online e-commerce business in 06. Is that what you said? That's right. Okay. Yes. So you started, so you moved out of California in 14. So you had pretty good run and start seven or eight years before you moved out here and, and, uh, and, and doing your online business. What was the, what was your first online business? What were you doing? It was a upscale children's boutique. I had just, um, actually I was pregnant with my, our third child who is nine and a half years younger than our middle child. We had a daughter who was 11 years older than our youngest was going to be. And, um, I just wanted something that I could do that made sense and not have to worry about traveling a lot. Cause I was originally thinking going into consulting and I thought, you know, I have to travel a lot. If I'm going to do consulting, what can I do otherwise? And uh, just decided, you know what, I'm in this realm right now. I'm in the mom throes of everything and I'm loving it. And I want to be able to have flexibility and be able to be with my children when they are having something at school. And so I started the online boutique. And what was great about it is that my vendors were all other women who had were in my same position. They were other women who had successful careers that left those careers and went into business for themselves, either manufacturing something or designing something. And um, 90% of my my vendors were moms who had gone into business for themselves, creating these fabulous products for children between the newborn and five years old. And you were selling those online exclusively? Yeah, exclusively online. So in 06, Spotify, I mean, uh, Shopify wasn't a thing. So how are you, what, 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 uh, will you just create your own website? I mean, how did you do that? We did. We created our own website and we used some technology that was uh, completely obsolete now because you don't need it. Um, <laughs> and we, you know, we did it trial and error. Um, by year two, I had outgrown the platform that we were on because our business was going so well. And we had to recreate our platform Um, and WordPress was a thing at the time. So we decided to do it on, um, actually, no, we didn't do it on WordPress. We did it on on a platform called Core Commerce which was a great platform. They're still around. They're actually here in Tennessee of all things. It's kind of crazy. Um, and built our platform there. And, uh, but it took, you know, we were like, oh my gosh, we've outgrown where we were. It was a, a problem with our foresight to think about how quickly things could change and um, had to readjust and worked hours and hours and hours um, additional to what we were already doing to get a new website up so that we could continue to grow. So you created, you essentially wrote your own site uh, on that core, core commerce platform, uh, outgrew the platform, had to move to something else. So what type of, uh, what type of revenues were you doing? I mean, to outgrow, was it just, was it sheer volume of orders or was it revenue issues or what, what was it that caused you to outgrow it? It was an ability to be able to provide the information to the, to the customer that they needed variables, you know, being able to choose options when you're buying something. And then also the ability to create, um, have as many products as we were growing into, we had over, you know, 1500 products online, um, with multiple vendors. So we needed to have a platform that could, um, provide the, the, the storage space for all of that and the ability for people to you know, click through and with ease. So um, when we found, we actually found Core Commerce was our second platform. The first one, I don't even remember the name. It was something bizarre. Um, uh, And so Core Commerce was the answer to to it at that time. And we also, the beauty of the relationship that I had with my vendors was that because we were all moms and we were, you know, understood our, our, uh, you know, our issues, you know, as moms, um, I, they were my drop shippers. I didn't have to have an inventory. They would drop ship for me. That is cool. So you were drop shipping before drop shipping was cool too. Yep. So you're always ahead of the curve, Wendy. We got to learn. We got to stay, stay with you because <laughs> you're ahead of the curve because drop shipping is the, is the, is the big thing now. And really for, for people that don't know what that is, that's when 
you sell a product, but you don't physically own or manage or store the product. You're selling it from some other third party, but you put it on your site. Somebody comes and buys it. Then you buy it and drop ship or ship it directly from them to your customer. So yeah. you were doing that in the kids clothing started that in 06. When did that, I assume that is no longer a business that you own and operate. When did that uh, shut down or when did you sell it or what happened? Yeah. So what happened was actually in 2014, things were going, not 2014, actually 2012, things were going so well that we also opened a brick and mortar out in Costa Mesa at a great place called the OC Mix. Um, and so we had a, a, a brick and mortar store as well. So we had the brick and mortar and we had the boutique um, online. So in 2014 or before 2014, when we moved out here, we were thinking, okay, well, we can take our business. We can open another brick and mortar, continue with the um, the online store and let's go because my husband had an opportunity with the company that he worked for to transfer here to, to Tennessee, to the Nashville area. And so, you know, we hemmed and hawed for a little bit, me a little bit more than him, <laughs> but um, we decided to do it. Our children were on board. And when we moved out here, um, I thought I was going to open another brick and mortar. And that's what I was expecting to do. So the problem was, is that I didn't know anything about this area. I knew nothing about Nashville. Honestly, my whole idea, idea of Nashville was it's the country. <laughs> what do I do in the country, right? I was from Orange County, California. We don't know what that looks like. So well, you, yeah, so you were in, but you were in the good part of California. So you didn't, you didn't, <laughs> you weren't trying to escape anything. So now it all becomes more clear. So your husband has a job transfer. You guys all said, okay, we're, up, we're up for this adventure. Let's move across country to Hicktown. I mean, Nashville, Tennessee, <laughs> Uh, what you discovered that is not what you thought it was. Absolutely. The only people wearing cowboy hats around here are people who aren't from here. That's <laughs> that's, right. that's very true. And I didn't buy boots or a cowboy hat when I moved here. So, you know, it's all good. But when I did move here, I needed to know people. I needed to know what was going on. I knew we wanted to live in Hendersonville, where we're at now, um, simply because I liked what I saw. I saw that there was good economic forecast. There was good schools. There were, um, you know, good businesses happening around the area, um, good developments. And I thought it was going really smartly. So when we moved here, I thought, okay, well, let me look for a brick and mortar. We'll keep the online store going. It was basically running on its own. We'd had it for so long. Um, you know, we'd gotten through all the hiccups. And um, I put a message out on one of the hip sites. You know, we have like the hip Hendersonville site and things like that. And I said, hey, new to the area, just want to get together with some other women professionals and women business owners for coffee. I need to know, you know, what's going on out here. And I got a great response, probably about 30 people had responded, hey, welcome to the area, so glad to have you, love to get together for coffee. So I said, okay, well, I'm gonna set a time and date and it's gonna be at my home. If you're able to come, come. So we had 13 women show up. And at the 13 women at that meeting, people were so great and wonderful. They, they're like, you know what? We need to keep doing this. So I said, okay, great. Let's keep doing it. How about every other Tuesday? And they're like, yeah, let's do it. Well, that started growing and growing. And I was asking people, hey, what do I need to know? What, you know, I want to continue with my business. But then people started asking me, hey, I know you have an online store. I know that you know what you're doing on social media because social media didn't exist when we first started right? Our store. So we were able to grow our store and then implement social media and be very successful. And so um, as people started knowing what I did and um, they wanted to, they asked me for help. They were asking me, can you help me with my website? Can you help me with my social media? And I was like, yeah, I'd be happy to. I, I was, I was that person that I loved when other people would come to me and ask for, for help. I was always happy to do that. And somebody finally said, Hey, can I just pay you to do this for me? I was like, I don't know what that means. I have no idea what that even looks like. I'd never been paid to provide, you know, advice because that's all I really had been doing or mentoring, you know? 
Um, and so I left her and I said, I, I really don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know how much time it would take for me to do that for you. Let me get back to you. So I came home and I talked to my husband and I said, this lady wants to pay me to help her with her business. Now they had already been in business for 46 years, this business particularly. And I, I was really impressed with them. Um, but they were, you know, they were 46 year old company who was still living, you know, in the early 2000s. And so um, I went back to her two weeks later and I said, yeah, you know what? I would love to help you. Here's what it will be per hour. Um, if you're okay with that, then let's do it. And she said, yeah, let's do it. And so I always call my business a happy accident because that truly literally is how it started. Although I think that, you know, in looking back at everything, I've been led, and I like to say that I've been led to where I am now because I've been given the opportunity to have all of these things in place so that I can be where I am now. And one of the things that I, I think about often is, you know, the, the quote that says, you know, when preparation meets opportunity, that you can have the advantage of doing something that maybe you never thought about doing. And all of the steps that have led me to that point were preparation. And I was able to recognize the opportunity, but the opportunity was literally, it was handed to me. And yeah. so it was, it was phenomenal. And from that point on, uh, she referred people to me and I was like, wow, this is becoming something. I was still running my online store. And, uh, but this business was rapidly growing and I wasn't thinking of it as a business. I truly wasn't thinking of it as a business. I was still helping somebody. And uh, finally, I sat down with my husband one day and I said, you know, I, I think that we need to really look at this as an opportunity for more. And it's growing without us really having to do anything. Um, and so he, you know, he hemmed and hawed this time a little bit. And I said, I, I said, let's, you know, let's keep talking about this. And we did, but it didn't take too long before I said, you know what, I want to just focus on this. So I found a broker for my business, but that was taking a lot of time and a lot of energy. And I just finally said, you know what, I'm just going to clear out any inventory that I have. I'm going to contact my vendors and I'm going to just move forward with this because it's growing quickly. I want to spend 100% of my time focusing on doing this. So you just shut down the boutique altogether? I did. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that boutique had been in business for eight years? For more than eight years. It was from 2006 to 2000 and at that time, 15. Holy moly. Yeah. And you just shut it down. And I just shut it down. Okay. Well, you know, you've succeeded in spite of what I think was a bad decision. Sure. <laughs> I yeah, would have I loved to have been your coach and help you. I can show you how to exit that business without selling it. I can show you how yeah. to do that because that's what I do. But Nevertheless, you you succeeded in spite of that, and 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 that be that should be a lesson to the listeners. You had a successful business, running great, and but you found a passion point that you wanted to chase, and you made what I think now would go. Eh, that probably wasn't the best decision, but in spite of that, yeah. you went on to succeed in other areas. So congratulations to you on that. So I I got some questions about that. So. I'm going to make the assumption because I know you uh, uh, is that that uh, that coffee meeting in your house was the beginning of the Sumner Women in Business. Is that is that the beginning of that? That is the very beginning of Sumner Women in Business. Absolutely. So for those of uh, those who are listening who don't know what that is, um, tell everybody a little bit about just give us a, a 50,000 foot flower what Sumner Women in Business because you got 700 members now that started with that 13 people in your house having coffee that day just because you wanted to meet people. Yeah. So give us a flower of what Sumner Women in Business is. So Sumner Women in Business is a networking group of professional business women and business owners who are focused on helping others and focused on lifting others up in their own businesses by providing resources and providing um, connections and relationships versus being competitive and, um, you know, who really just want to be part of something bigger than themselves. And you, and, and it's called Sumner Women in Business because that's the county we live in. Uh, you live in Hendersonville, Tennessee. I live in Gallatin, Tennessee. We're just north of Nashville. The county of Sumner, for those that want to kind of know where that is, is just north to northeast of Davidson County, which is where Nashville is. So we're part of the 
uh, the greater area, greater Nashville. Uh, I think the MSA is what they call it. But so Sumner Women in Business, you started with 13 people in your home and now you're 700 women and it's not meeting in your house anymore, right? It's, uh, <laughs> not anymore, unless I'm going to, you know, upsize. I really don't want to do that. Um, but no, if we um, in two years into um, founding Sumner Women in Business, um, I realized that not only is my personal business, Navarro Creative Group, going well and things are, you know, just really need some TLC, I need to be able to focus. Um, if I wanted to continue to provide value to the Sumner Women in Business team and members, I needed to be able to do something there also. So again, I didn't want to dissolve something that was going so well and that people really wanted. So I approached the Hendersonville Chamber um, president, Kathleen Hawkins, who was new at the time. And I asked her, I said, you know, I, I really want to find a home for Sumner Women in Business, but I need um, someone who can support it and do well. I said, what do you think about partnering and having Sumner Women in Business be part of the Hendersonville Chamber? And I didn't know then, that. So I guess I, I, I completely missed that. So that's now an official part of the Hendersonville Chamber of Commerce. It is. It's now an official part of Hendersonville Chamber of Commerce. I still manage it and I still um, uh, facilitate all of the meetings, but I have an amazing team of support at the chamber and they are all on board and have been incredible to help us make sure that we're consistently meeting, which we meet once every month now, um, every Tuesday of the month. Um, and th we also have a Women Impacting the Community event twice a year where we are celebrating women who have made an incredible impact in the community. And um, the meetings are you know, 45, 50 women at any time every month. And the Women Impacting the Community events are 250 people. And that's only because we don't have the space in Hendersonville to be able to have a larger crowd. Otherwise, we would because we sell out every single time. Well, this would be a this this episode is going to be a big plug for the city of Hendersonville and for the Hendersonville <laughs> Chamber of Commerce. I know Kathleen won't object to that at all. <laughs> Not at all. I think she likes a little bit of plugging. <laughs> yeah. Well, so let's talk about let's talk about uh, something specific. So you've been very successful as an entrepreneur in two ventures that are for profit. Yeah. And then one that is nonprofit, which I would, even though I don't know how Sumner Women in Business is formed, that it really doesn't matter. But that wasn't a for-profit, you know, you weren't doing that to sell products or services. Right. But you've got three things that you've started and succeeded at. So you've got the boutique, you've got now when, uh, the Navarro Creative Group, and you've got this, uh, the Sumner Women in Business. Let's focus in on Navarro Creative Group. So what you did, it sounds like to me, is you made a decision to leap into that as a full-time uh, full-time focus and start a business around that because people were paying you to do it Be because you had succeeded at doing it for your own business. And now that has blossomed into a very successful, one of the top creative groups in Sumner County here in, uh, in our area. So what is it that you guys focus on and why do you think you've been so successful at it? We're going to take a break from our show right now to bring you our sponsors. All right. Thanks for listening to our sponsors. Now back to the show. Well, we focus on what we know that we're good at. We focus on website design and we focus on uh, digital marketing, specifically with um, paid ads and social media. And we have some other things that we can do for customers, but we don't sell those as standalone products because we really do believe in the power of the internet and we believe in the power of digital marketing. Um, but we know it has to start with your presence online and that's via your website. So we really work with um, entrepreneurs and business owners who want to go to that next level, who know that they need more online because that's where everybody is. And so I think what has made us successful, because there's a lot of us out there. I mean, that's not, you know, we're not going to sugarcoat it. There are tons of other website designers out there. However, there are a few website designers who will sit down with you and talk with you about how the internet works and about how your website should work and about how you need to own your website and you need to own your URL. So we help mentor them. We, we, I've carried on that whole mentoring mindset into this business so that I can help the business owner understand a new space for them and what that means for their business. And I think because we are very strong with relationships and we do not just say, okay, here's your website, you're done. 
we want them to contact us. We want them to ask us questions. We want to continue working with them on an ongoing basis so that they can continue to scale. And because we have the expertise online and they have the expertise about their business, it's a great marriage of, again, the opportunity to grow. So you're helping a lot of businesses make their presence known online. Have you got one or two stories of customers, like little success stories that you feel good about when you talk about, you know, we did this for this customer and this is what happened. You got, you got a story or two you could share? I, I do. I have two. I'll start with our very first client that I was telling you about. Um, so they were a 46 year old company and they had been doing things the same way. They had, you know, a small crew. And the thing was, though, is that they'd been here for 46 years. People didn't know them. The people from their backyard were coming in and saying, I never even knew you were here. So what happened as we started um, and she started seeing results, um, people started coming in. People, new people started asking for them. They were able to explode, really, because now not only do they have, of course, their local um, clients. They work in, up and down, of course, Middle Tennessee, but they've added a whole wedding uh, section to their business. They have four delivery vans here in the area and they have national accounts. So they have, and, and the beautiful thing is that this, the daughter was the one who approached me and she has now uh, been able to hire more people so that she can do what she loves, the exit without exiting. And that's dog training. She loves to show dogs. And she's done amazingly well being able to show dogs across the United States. Really? So that, yes. It's, it's amazing to watch the growth of individuals and entrepreneurs too, right? Because we have, you know, we are uh, entrepreneurs, we have passions and her passion was to help her family business, but it really wasn't her, 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 her thing. She didn't want to stay in floral design and arrangement for the rest of her life, but she wanted to help her family business. So now she's able to not only help her family business, but she's able to do what she loves. That's and great. That's show, showing dogs. I love that. So what's your other story? You said you had two. My other story is a great uh, business that we get to work with. They're, they're out in Minnesota and they are a very successful um, engineering firm and they work with Fortune 100 companies. Now they've grown and they've done a great job for themselves. So they have a great name in the industry, but what they wanted to do was to get back to the root of their business. And that was the relationships. They felt like they had grown so big that they had lost that intimacy with um, their online presence specifically. Their website was very generic, not real warm, didn't really reflect who they were. So when they approached us, they told us all this stuff. And we said, let's, let's figure this out. So we were able to redo their website and to create a new brand for them based on relationships and letting people know that, you know, yes, we are big, but we're not so big that we're not going to be personal. And so that's how we've been working with them. And it's been going super well. Um, they're really happy. They're getting um, some great exposure in new industries as well. Um, and I think that it just has brought the whole mindset for the company. I think they have 50 employees. So it's brought the whole mindset for the company to a point where we need to make sure that we are forming relationships. That's really the basis of a great company. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's really good. I, I, let's take a moment right now, because if people are listening to this and they're impressed with you, obviously at the end of the show, I always give you the, give my guests the opportunity to say, how can people contact you? But you just gave a really good pitch for what it is that you do. So how, Navarro Creative Group, how would people get in touch with you if they were like, hey, I want to talk to this lady? Well, number one, just Google <laughs> Navarro Creative Group. We're going to pop right up. But we are everywhere. We have our website, Navarro Creative Group, all of our handles on social media, um, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram um, are all Navarro Creative Group. Actually, I take that back. And Twitter is Navarro Creative with an eight because somebody took the name. And um, you can contact us through, uh, you know, you can contact me directly in my email, Wendy at Navarro Creative Group. I love to talk to people. I love to hear stories um, and you brainstorm. That's like my favorite thing. If I could be an R&D and brainstormer all day long, I would be. And Navarro is spelled N-A-V-A-R-R-O. 
O. So for That's people right. looking that up, make sure you're spelled right. All right. Now I've got a question. So this is called the root of all success. That's what my show is. And my show is predicated on the idea that I believe that there are these five things that everybody as entrepreneurs who are successful, these keys that they use to unlock success for them. But before I ask you about those, how would Wendy define success? What, what does success mean to you? Yeah, so this is a question that I used to get asked a lot and still do, but I never really had a clear answer before. Um, now I absolutely know what that is. And success to me means being able to say yes when I want to and no when I have to. And what that means is that I don't have to rely on saying yes to every job or every person um, because when I say no to those, it's better for me. When I say yes to what I want and what and 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 the, the things I want to do, it's better for the company. Now that's that's really good. I, I get, of course, I ask that question every time I do a show, and all the question, all the answers are always different. But you said yeah, being able to say yes when I want to and no when I need to. Yeah. That's really, really good. Yeah. That's good. Well, for all the years that you didn't have an answer for, you made up, you made up for it because that was good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so let me ask you this. So these five keys that I talk about on the show, listeners are familiar with it. And you are a listener, so you kind of are familiar with it too. I've been listening to your story and I think I've figured out what those are and how they show up in your story, but I want to see if I'm right. So I'm going to, I'll okay. let you answer. So the first key to success that I think entrepreneurs use to unlock their success is that of passion, you know, their, their ability and willingness to endure, because that's what the word actually means. And as one guest re recently pointed out, because she was also a student of words and studying how, where they came from, said that it was uh, really has a lot to do with suffering. And, and yes, passion and suffering go together, because that's why we call it the passion of the Christ. But the word endure is probably a, a more palatable word for us as entrepreneurs to think about passion. So where, where was it in your story? that you believe that passion helped you get to the place where you are today? I've always had a passion. And I think that's one of the things I, I used to think when I was younger, why do I feel so driven? Why is it that I'm doing what I do? What does this mean for me? And I knew it meant there was something more, right? I, I made for more is a great uh, verse that I like to, to say all the time. And the passion, the drive that you have, there's a reason. And I don't think I, there was ever one time when I realized it, but I've always questioned, why do I have this passion? Why won't I give up? You know, why am I driven to do these crazy things that people look at me like you're nuts, like not selling my company, right? So I, passion. I, I so you've gotten this ability to kind of push through when others say you shouldn't, and that's mm -hmm. why you're successful. Now, the second key is about being at the right place at the right time. And here's my, I'm going to tell you what I think. And then you tell me what, if I'm right or not, you coming to Tennessee and, and out of uh, desperation is probably not the right word. Cause it wasn't a matter of desperation and oh my gosh, if I don't do this, but out, out of sheer desperation, just to meet other women who are business owners and business leaders, you had that coffee in your home. I think to, I would say that's the place, that's the right place at the right time. But, but you may disagree. Are there other places or is there another story that a place that pointed to your success? No, absolutely not. I think that you're exactly right. Being here when I was, because it's before the wave, right. Um, has been a huge uh, benefit to my, to my success and the success, success of the business. I didn't have a whole lot of uh, competition. I didn't have a whole lot of people who were coming in doing the same thing that I was doing. It was new to the area. So that place was your living room. <laughs> I living in the middle of Hendersonville. Yeah. And so, um, so the third key is, is people. So you got passion, place, people. And who, what's the lady's name who approached you that day that you, the 46 year old company, what's her name? Her name is Christy Brown Hale. All right. And so Christy is Brown's florist. So, oh, I didn't know that. I, I, I know, I know old Rip, old Rip. He just sent me a message. Of course, we're recording this uh, the first week of February. He sent me my Valentine's Day reminder to get my orders in early. <laughs> He's the best. I love him. Yeah. So, um, so, so Christy, 
yeah. approaches you out of, uh, you know, for, for whatever reason she approaches you and says, hey, will you help me? It seems to me like she's one of probably more than just one of maybe many, but she's one of the people that you can point to is like, if she hadn't come to my house that day, I don't know that we'd be sitting here. Is that, is that true? Yeah, it, it is absolutely true. Her and there was another um, woman who, J.J. Von Kessel, who lived here. She now lives over in Texas. But um, she was one to reach out to me right away, too. She was one of those people who just, you know, what, what can I do to help you? What can I do, you know, to, to make you feel home, at home and welcome? You know, and that is the kind of uh, thing that you want to surround yourself with people who are like that. And uh, but yeah, those those two individuals and um, there are so many more. And then, of course, my family. Yeah. And your husband, uh, your husband, who got the job offer to, to transfer all the way over here to Tennessee, had that not happened, you yeah. might still be selling children's clothes and, and be successful in your own right doing that. But this, yeah. this move to Tennessee was a different place, different time, different people. So all of that kind of comes together to lead you to where you are today. Now, the fourth fourth key is preparation. And you, you gave that good quote earlier when preparation meets opportunity, that's where success is at that intersection. So your preparation for that to succeed as Navarro, Navarro creative group, you, I, I, I mean, is it safe to say that you probably wouldn't have been, there's no way you would have been successful at an agency had you not spent those, those 10 years or whatever it was, 12 years of running your own e-commerce business, trying to figure out how to get people to recognize you. Do you, is that the way you see it? Is that your 100%, preparation? 100% because I didn't have a, I, I wasn't in tech ever. I was always in business in other means, right? And I was much more of a creative than I was a techie person. So having the years of having, having needing to understand what it meant to be online, understand what it meant to get out there in front of people who are online. Um, and I was lucky, 2006, there weren't a bazillion businesses online. So I was able to kind of slowly work my way through understanding how people will shop online, how people will find you online, how businesses or other periodicals or media want to, to hear about you online. And so all of that prepared me to help other people. And because I've also been in their shoes, I can relate to people who want to do something online. I can relate to having a small business and understanding what it means to operate my small business while now going forward with being, you know, being an online business as well. Yeah. And isn't that the key? I think that the, oh, so many people miss is they hire coaches or take on mentors or advisors who've not done what they want to do. I don't, I still don't understand why you would hire some Instagram guru to, to, you know, pay him to do a course or her to do a course. And they've not done anything like all the, their whole claim to fame is that they have a coaching business. Well, did you, have you done anything? Did you build a business? And for you, why would, why would somebody hire somebody to take over all their creative if they haven't have a track, don't have a track record of, Hey, I built a company from nothing to this doing the things I'm going to do for you. And you're going to pay me for it, but I know how to do it. I know what I'm doing. It amazes me that people hire people that don't know what they're doing. And, and they're everywhere. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's so many people who are selling these training courses and these webinars and all this other stuff. And I, and I see people around me coming into the space that I'm in right now, knowing they don't have the expertise. And, and that's actually dangerous for businesses, because if you screw something up online, if you don't do something right and your store goes down, mm. what happens to your business? You've got to be able to, to rely on the people that you have surrounding you to know what they're doing so that if something does happen, that it doesn't happen permanently. Yeah, the cost of having your, if you're an e-com store, the cost of having your business down is significantly more than anybody could imagine. And I know from experience, I'm actually dealing, I own an e-commerce company right now and, and it's down and it's killing me. Yeah. I absolutely hate it. I've had to hire a consulting company to come in and help me get it turned back on. It's just, anyway, it's not about me, but I know what you're talking about. <laughs> But All you right. know, you understand. Yeah. I know it's painful. It's very yeah. painful. We learn, we succeed because of our failures and we learn success is, is not a very good teacher. Failure is a great teacher when you oh, yeah. screw something up. And so that's the cool thing about hiring a coach or somebody like you to do creative who've, who failed at it and then succeeded in spite of it. 
and, and because you've you've gone through the pain of well i didn't do my seo correctly so my my clicks went through my click through rates down or you know i'm not getting enough eyeballs on the side or people the bounce rates too high you know you know that because you've experienced it you know what's going on and all the people who know all those terms are going yep i know <laughs> <laughs> yep you're right so let's talk about the fifth P or the fifth key. They're all P's, right? Passion, people, or passion, place, people, preparation. And the fifth one is plan. And by plan, I don't mean, you know, when I look at entrepreneurs who've been very successful, very few of them have dedicated, detailed, written business plans. I, I never had a written business plan for literally any of the businesses I've ever owned. Um, now, that could be good or bad, but I've, I've succeeded in spite of that. But what I mean by plan is what was your plan to obtain and deploy the capital and the resources required to be successful? Now, I'm going to guess that when you're doing creative work where it's just based on your intellectual, your own intellectual abilities, there's not a whole lot of startup capital or cost or technology needed. That's my assumption. But what was your plan to get Navarro Creative Group off the, off the ground and have all of the resources required to service your customers correctly? The plan was to, to make sure that we had a computer and make sure that we understood what we were going to be doing, right? We, we had to understand the SEO. We had to understand copy. We had to understand what a website looks like from the back end and what that bots from Google and all those wonderful crawlers who come out to search your website to bring it back to the end user. That was what we needed to understand so that we could do a good job. Now, as we've grown what we needed to understand is that there's a whole lot of software, which is one, a big chunk of my budget that we invest in to make sure that we can do the best job for our clients. Isn't it weird how software as a service has just taken over the world? I mean, it's absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I think what, what was it? Was it, was it Salesforce who was their first, oh they're, they're one of the first big ones that, that no software, I think their logo had a no soft or software with the word with a circle and a slash through it. And it was more, it was more one of those, oh, that's just so I don't have to have a disc. You send me a floppy disk or a CD to we install had a whole this. Folder this big of, <laughs> of discs. Yeah, we were just laughing about that the other day, my husband and I. <laughs> it was crazy. It's crazy how SaaS has turned out to to be what it is today. But um it's very helpful. Oh yeah. Uh, but it's expensive, as you probably know better than anybody, because you know, to, to have, like I use, I use several pieces of software myself to run my companies and there's, you know, some are 10 bucks a month, some are 15, some are a lot more than that per month. And then you have to pay annually. And, and then every time that bill comes around, like, oh crap, I forgot that bill was coming in. So, but, yeah, but multiply 10 times all these other, you know, yes, it, it adds up quickly. Yeah. I always think, I always think if the average household just added up what they're paying for in monthly subscriptions, like Netflix just raised their rates again. Yeah. And it's like, Oh my gosh, come on people. So they, so they've raised their rates. So you got Netflix, you got Hulu, you got Amazon prime, you've got your cable or your direct, you know, satellite service, you've got cell phone service. It's all this. You start adding this up, man, you're spending a thousand dollars a month just on technology, just to be entertained. Yeah. <laughs> and, and think about this. This is another thing that gets me. Would you have ever thought 10 years ago that you would spend over a thousand dollars on your phone? Oh, that's crazy. Isn't right. it nuts? I was, yeah, I was talking last night. This, uh, so one of my friends, uh, we, we went to this cocktail party last night, downtown uh, Nashville, and we were just sitting around chatting and his son is in the music business and he's very, uh, he's up and coming and he's doing a, he's doing a fantastic job. Uh, he's got a pretty big following. And so when he posts on Instagram, you know, he's, he's that guy that's getting 35,000 likes and comments. I mean, he's, he's really starting to ramp his things up, that's but he needs a, he needs a new camera to, to take better photographs of him when he's putting on a concert and that type of thing. So, so what he did is he went to his dad and he said, all right, dad, here's the thing. I know you're going to buy this camera, but I'm going to make a case for a new iPhone, the I, whatever the iPhone 8,000 plus or whatever it is now. I don't know where they're at. I'm not an iPhone guy, but so there he said, I want to buy this one because the camera is just as good as the other camera you would have bought. Plus it does all this other stuff and it's really less money, but it's still $1,300. Right. And uh, so his, his son did convince him they got the new phone, but yeah, we're carrying around <laughs> these thousand dollars, like my phone right here. We're carrying around these thousand dollar computers in our pockets. Yeah. Uh, and, and see, and that's what, you know, when you started your children's boutique in 2006, iPhone wasn't even a thing yet, right? Oh, I don't there think was that no came such up. thing. Yeah, yeah, that didn't that didn't even have me come out yet. So mm -hmm. you have been through, and, and there's not a lot of creative group owners like you mm -hmm. who've been through that entire life cycle of the technology. Yeah. Now, on one hand, the Senate could say, well, 
you know, you, you, you've been around too long. You're not fresh. You don't, but the, but the, but the, pos, the person with a positive, positive outlook like me would say, no, you're the, exactly the person we need to hire because you've been through it all. You know what it was like pre, yeah. but you did e-commerce without all the extras, without yeah. all the stuff and you succeeded in spite of. So congratulations on your success. You've been, you. you know, it's, it's nice to watch what you're doing. So it's also nice to see, um, local people do well. And uh, because I know you invest so much in women and women in business, it's nice to see a, a powerful, successful entrepreneur woman that I get to bring on the show. And and as I, you were the fourth woman in a row that I've interviewed right Ooh, now, like just on the nice. podcast. So it's really, I don't know how these are going to release that my yeah. team works on the releases, but it's likely that you will be, you know, one of three or four or more women in a row. And it was funny because when I started the show, um, that, that it was, it was harder for me to connect and find where are the successful, I know they're out there, but I just, I don't run in those circles and I need to find these successful women. So I'm going to put that, put it out to you. If you know, other very successful entrepreneurial women, introduce them to me. I'd love to have them on the show because I, I, I think that the, I think that women are underrepresented in the entrepreneurial community yeah. and it's not because, uh, they don't have the same opportunities or same abilities. It's just, they, they're, I need to know who they are so I can bring them on the show. We can talk about it. Well, I, I, I will definitely do that. I will give you a list of some phenomenal women who I know that I have the pleasure of uh, being running in the circle with. And um, I, will, I will absolutely be happy to do that. So we've got a pretty a wide swath of listeners. We've got people that are on the very beginning, like you were back in 2006. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got people that are, uh, that are on the, you know, nine figure side of things where they're, yeah. they're, you know, they're, they're doing fantastic. And then everybody in between. Mm -hmm. So I want you to think for just a minute and to give some advice. So as we close the show out today, I want you to look and think about the people in the front end of the spectrum that they're just either haven't gotten started or just getting started in the first year or two. What would your advice be as someone who now has been in, you know, over a decade, a very successful, uh, you know, very successful person in business an entrepreneur, what would your advice be to them? Commit. If you're going to go forward and you really have a passion for what you want to do, you need to commit to doing it. You can't be washy, wishy-washy. You have to know that it's going to be hard. It's going to be a lot of work and you're going to have to learn all, you know, along the way but you have to commit to doing it. Yeah. Isn't that, you know, the wishy-washiness, uh, you know, the shiny object syndrome, we go back and forth, back and forth. So yeah. great, great advice. Well, is there, uh, I, I'm going to give your contact information again after I ask this question, but I want to give you the last word on the show. Is there anything you want to add to whatever we've talked about in terms of success and how you achieved it? Yeah. I think one of the things is that you have to continually learn. You know, in my industry on digital marketing, I do not control what happens with the internet. So who does? It's Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, all of those guys. And I need to know what they're doing. So you, I have to always be learning. I can't sit back and say, I know it all because I never will because somebody else is in control. So I need to know where my resources are so that I can be on top of anything that's happening so that my customers are benefiting. All right. So if you want to get in touch with Wendy Navarro at Navarro Creative Group, go look her up on any of the socials at Navarro Creative Group. And your website is NavarroCreativeGroup.com, right? That's right. And so if you are a woman in business, you own a business, she's somebody and you're local to Sumner County, Tennessee, you definitely need to talk to her Let's to get coffee. involved in that for sure. Sumner Women in Business. And then also, if you want some help with your digital creative content, reach out to Wendy. Wendy, it has been such an honor to have you on the show and reconnect. Yes. It's been a long time since we got to connect. So this has been, this has been great. So thank you for coming on the show. It's been good to have you. Thank you for having me, Jason. I truly appreciate it. And I'm so excited to see all of your success. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, there you have it. Another very successful entrepreneur. And this time, of course, I think we're in a, in a, uh, the string of having successful women, female entrepreneurs on the show, which I love. And uh, Wendy's story, of course, has a lot to do with the, the, her influence and mentorship with women, especially here in Sumner County, Tennessee, with Sumner Women in Business. And I really want you to go look her up. Go look up Wendy Navarro, follow her on socials. She and her daughter do a really cool job of, of uh, putting interesting and funny things on their, on their social channels, following them on Instagram. But I, I do this show to help you so that you can see what other people are doing to become successful as entrepreneurs. There's no excuse. 
it's not it's not a lack of knowledge lack of opportunity lack of what it really is is lack of creativity all you've got to do is just be creative enough to get out there and do it take that risk make that innovative step forward and you could be doing what wendy's doing I mean, in, in your own niche you can design you could decide to open a children's boutique start a women's organization you could run a creative group or something completely different but don't wait and commit as she said commit but here's what i want to i want to recap for her her show that I love probably more than anything we talked about, she, her definition of success, getting to say yes when I want to and no when I need to. That's success. And I love that definition. And I hope you write that down. And I hope that you're attempting to succeed that way too. Now, speaking of success, if you want to be a successful entrepreneur or a more successful entrepreneur, I want to invite you to, act, to join my membership called The Successful Entrepreneur. The monthly membership dues are only $55 and you get access to weekly live coaching with me. So I do twice a month. I do an open coaching call where anybody, any of my uh, members in the membership can log in and I do an open coaching call to answer questions called Ask Jason Live. I do that twice a month. I also do something called an Entrepreneur Master Series where I do that twice a month and I bring in a master of some particular thing you know, some area in entrepreneurship, whether it's financial literacy, sales, leadership, et cetera. And, and I bring him or her in. We do a 90 minute podcast ish kind of episode, but it's not about story as, as much as it's about tactics and strategy. So I, we teach you how to do certain things. So for example, I've got one coming up on how to five secrets to get mailbox money through an e-commerce business. I've got one coming up on the, the top four things you need to do to create a website that converts. You know, these are things I want to talk about and train you on. And then third, I do a success lecture once a month. And that thing is just an hour long of me teaching on a particular topic. Topic. And those are all done live. They're all done by Zoom. It's a webinar. You can log in. You get access to all that. Plus, you get access to online forums. You get access to a content library of all the past recordings of all the events that I've done, all for only $55 a month. How do you join? Go to therealjasonduncan.com slash T-S- E. That's the real Jason Duncan.com slash TSE. And our, uh, we're having a new outro, a new professional outro recorded, which uh, I don't know if it's going to be on this show or not. I know my editors will figure that out. So at some time soon, the outro will have a special discount offer for you to join that for a discount. So I want you to be paying attention to that. So thank you for listening. Tune in again next time when I talk with yet another very successful entrepreneur about his or her journey to success. Until then, I'm the real Jason Duncan. And Jesus is King. Thank you for listening to another edition of The Root of All Success with the real Jason Duncan. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, we invite you to visit therootofallsuccess.com to access the show notes and other helpful resources. Take charge of your business, grow it from great to incredible. Join us again next time here on The Root of All Success. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.